Bienvenidos al primer congreso internacional online de medicina regenerativa musculoesquelética. Hoy nos acompaña el doctor Alberto Gobi. Good morning to everybody. I want to introduce myself. My name is Alberto Gobbi. I work in Italy, in Milano, and uh, I'm an orthopedic surgeon and a sport doctor. I have been working in the United States, uh, collaborating with uh, UCSD, and uh, I am the former president, president of the International Cartilage Society. And uh, I'm happy to share with you 20 years of my experience in uh, cartilage repair. As everybody knows, articular cartilage is a very specialized tissue with limited regeneration capability and uh, load bearing possibility and uh, reduced friction between articulating surfaces. But when destroyed, never repair and this is a big problem because cartilage is very important inside our joint we can have a trauma we can move to chondropedia then we can have eventually other injuries and we step down to chondropathy and we end with the osteoarthritis and osteoarthritis can be found in 60 percent of chondral injuries in a group of patients between 40 to 50 years of age. So we're talking about uh, a perfect storm. This is how my friend Mandelbaum from Santa Monica used to call the perfect storm when we have uh, an injury, maybe ACL injury, and then we have uh, some other factors that here is indicated as a cold front alignment, gender, level of play, age, a time of injury, present age, timing of radiograms, modulators. We can have a meniscus injury. And then we have several factors like galcosaminoglycans, metalloproteinases, growth factors, and all these contribute to the storm. And uh, what happened with this storm? Happened that osteoarthritis is a leading cause of instability disability. And, uh, if we consider the top 10 causes of disability, we have arthritis at the first place. So is the only answer to osteoarthritis to do a total knee replacement? Probably no, because uh, in younger age, we have an increased risk of early prosthesis failure. So when we discuss about arthroplastic, we should probably consider as a final treatment because of the limited durability, the high cost of the treatment, and uh, we focus on preventive intervention, preventive therapy, and in order to enhance the tissue regeneration and to reduce degeneration. The good news is that we can change. There is an opportunity. The only constant in life is change. This uh, comes from uh, Heraclitus of Ephesus. So we can change we can work together with health system, university, all together in a team in order to create a new protocol, a new therapy. But why bioorthopedics? Because as I said, chondropathy can uh, end in arthritis and uh, we know that there is a limited healing potential of this uh, tissue. So we have a biological problem and I think we should find a biological solution for a biological problem. So the biological solution, hopefully are less invasive procedure, accelerated treatment. We want to reduce the morbidity and to enhance the recovery. Our body has huge regenerative capacity. Every second we have 15 million blood cells that expire in our body. And the goal is to restore the structural and biomechanical integrity of the articular surface. So the ideal regeneration is uh, a tissue that uh, is highland cartilage with a good integration, with good amount of collagen type 2 
proteoglycans, no mineralization, and uh, hopefully no osteoarthritis in the future. Cartilage defect must be addressed considering the unit of the joint. So in this case, if we discuss about the knee, we should consider tibiofemoral alignment, patellofemoral tracking, ACL insufficiency, meniscal absence of lesion, and bone deficiency. What are the treatment options today for one problem? We have many solutions, but today, in my opinion, there is no gold standard treatment around the globe. There are many options, many possibilities of treatment, microfracture, chondroplastic, implant, ACI, mesenchymal stem cell implantation, and there is an explosion of new techniques because there are many new techniques and many new products. So in my life, cartilage was always one of the most important aspects. So I spent the last 25 years following a patient, treating patient, using different techniques. We should consider that even today, a big part of cartilage lesion are treated with microfracture. And this is a picture from United States market. And we can see that 80% of the treatment are microfracture. I started early with Dr. Stedman. I was a young doctor. I traveled to Vail. And I was working with Dr. Stedman since the beginning, so I think that I learned how to do microfracture. But I want to do some consideration about microfracture. Why microfracture are so popular? In my opinion, because of the three E, because it is an easy, economic, and probably effective system. But I'm not sure that it's true that microfracture does not burn any bridges, because there are several articles like uh, minus and others showing that uh, we can have an increased failure rate of ACI after prior treatment with uh, microfracture. So probably it's not true that when you do microfracture, you do not alter anything in the human body. Furthermore, we can have bone overgrowth. So when we perform microfracture, we can have some bone overgrowth where we perform the small holes in the bone. So microfracture ideally are suited for a small cartilage lesion, femoral condyle, well-contained cartilage defect, outer bridge grade three, three or four. The technique is quite easy. We can use standard arthroscopy. We prepare very carefully the lesion and we make some holes perpendicular to the surface with a, a special instrument. Then we lower the pressure because we want to see if uh, there is a bleeding from our small holes. There is a specific rehabilitation protocol that should be followed. We wanted to analyze long-term results our, in our group of patients and we follow up a group of athletes for average of 15 years. These are the group of patients, 170 patients. And uh, briefly what we found in this uh, long-term follow-up, that uh, we have a quite uh, fast uh, recovery. So after two years, you probably have a good amount, uh, around 70, 68% of good results. But these results start immediately to decrease. And if you follow up the patient, after more than 10 years, you drop down to 25% of the patient that still have good results. So we concluded our study say that uh, microfracture can offer better results in young active athletes with a short duration of symptoms, small size lesion, well shoulder lesion, and in the femoral condyle. But if we want to treat large chondral defect, patellofemoral defect, trochlear defect, uh, multiple lesion, we don't have good results. Let's discuss uh, 20 years of experience with the cell therapy. 
with first and second generation ACI. Again, I met uh, Lars Peterson, one of my best friends. He taught me how to do ACI. We share our results. We know that uh, with uh, his technique, first generation ACI, you can have uh, durable, good clinical results even after 20 years. But there are many technical aspects to be resolved because it is a, a complex and invasive procedure. It is difficult to manage the chondrocyte solution. You need a watertight periosteal suture and you need uh, two surgical procedures. Furthermore, not all the cells are the same, so it's difficult to have the same amount of cells in all the lesion and uh, unfortunately you can have uh, some uh, complication and uh, overgrowth of uh, the periosteal uh, flap. So we started early together with Lars Peterson and John Lane thinking how can we improve this technique and in Italy in 1997 we started working on second generation ACI, considering biodegradable scaffold, bioactive factors, and cells to uh, recreate cartilage. There are different types of scaffold, and briefly, I think that uh, we decided to use the most friendly scaffold, that uh, is a scaffold that is biocompatible, biodegradable, permeable, reproducible, easy available, and easy to use. And uh, this scaffold was a hyaluronin-based scaffold. We know that uh, hyaluronin can enhance chondrocyte proliferation, can help the chondro protection effect, and uh, can create a chondrogenesis effect. So this is a chondrocyte on uh, this hyaluronin-based scaffold and uh, this is the technique that uh, we developed in Italy. Initially it was a mini artrotomy um, surgery and then uh, also an atroscopic technique for selected lesion of the femoral condyle. We published several articles on this technique. This is a study in large patellofemoral full thickness condyle defect treated with this uh, scaffold and cells. These are the results at five years and uh, briefly we found good clinical results and uh, we analyzed several scoring system, ICRS, IKDC, Tegner, we did MRI and also in some cases second look atroscopy. This is the surgical technique in this group part were treated with uh, Arthrotomy and few with uh, arthroscopy. This is the IKDC objective knee evaluation showing at five years follow up a significant uh, improvement in this patient. And uh, this is uh, a patellar lesion in a female, 37 years of age, at two years, showing a mature graft, uh, good uh, articular surface and uh, relatively soft with indentation, but with good uh, biopsy and uh, showing hyaline-like cartilage and absence of collagen type one. We also published uh, 10 years of results with the hyalograph together with Elisabetta Cohn and Giuseppe Filard. And again, we had uh, very interesting results. This is a second look atroscopy in a patient treated for a large lesion with uh, Hyalograft, and you can see a very good result. This is another biopsy showing a good histological assessment. And we also wanted to present a study comparing at five years this atroscopic second generation chondrocyte implantation with microfracture. And briefly, what we found was that while at the beginning microfracture recover pretty fast, even if we treated in this group of hyalograft a bigger lesion and worse patient, they are similar at two years. But if we continue till five years, 
there is a big degradation of results in microfracture, while the results are stable with a hyalogram. So basically, we found that this was an interesting, good system to treat uh, cartilage lesion, but there were some disadvantages. Two surgical procedure, more risk for the patient, high cost, especially in Italy, the cost was important because we had cell cultivation, GMP lab, two hospital admission, inability to work and to surgery. So in conclusion, it was a good system and we operate many patients. I think that in Europe, more than 6,000 patients have been operated with this system. We found good clinical results, but the backdraft was the high cost of this treatment. So we started looking for new possibility possibly in one step procedure. My experience uh, um, with this uh, uh, one step surgery started with Alan Nixon and Lisa Fortier at the Vermont University. They were using uh, in horses, bone marrow aspirate concentrated associated with uh, um, micro holes of the bone. And uh, again, showing that uh, we can use our regenerative capacity because we can have these uh, cells so-called stem cells but are not stem cells because we should distinguish bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells adipose tissue derived mesenchymal stem cell synovium derived mesenchymal stem cells periosteum and muscle that are multipotent cells are not the pluripotent cells so we are not talking about embryonic or induced pluripotent stem cell we are talking about some cells that have the capability to regenerate to help regeneration of some tissue including cartilage muscles and bone so the concept of potency as you can see we have multipotent stem cells that can differentiate in different type of cells in a small number of lineage. But this is what is interesting for us, that uh, using these cells, <laughs> we can regenerate a repair tissue in large chondral defect. And the first study was presented by Wakitani in Japan, and this is uh, the original article. So basically, we know that we have these so-called mesenchymal stem cells in vivo, and these cells are in a niche, and this niche is close to the vessel. So we're talking about periarticular mesenchymal stem cells close to micro vessels. So pericytes are so-called these uh, vessels, have these uh, small cells on it. And Arnold Kaplan spent many years studying and teaching me about these cells. Basically today we think that uh, when we have uh, a pericyte, a small vessel, this pericyte can release mesenchymal stem cells absolutely in vitro. It's not so sure what happened in vivo. And these cells, are the progenitor. And uh, in vitro, again, under culture, they can recreate osteogenesis, chondrogenesis, and adipogenesis. In vivo, probably they act as medicinal cells. They interact with immunomodulation and they have a trophic <coughs> effect into the joint. That's why. Arnold Kaplan decided to call this cell medicinal signaling cells because these cells dock at sight of a broken or inflamed blood vessels and they have a regenerative component. So these cells that can produce bioactive factors. So we have a trauma and injury. The pericyte can release these mesenchymal stem cells that becomes an activated cell, and these cells can have regenerative capability in our human body. 
So mesenchymal stem cells, again, in vivo, when are activated, they have trophic and immunomodulatory effect. These cells are multipotent in vitro, but we don't know what happened in vivo. Probably the paracrine effect is more important. So it's very important to understand that what happened in vitro with culture is different of what happened in vivo in human body. But we know that immunomodulation of these cells is a triggered by phagocytosis of these mesenchymal stem cells by monocytic cells. So these cells can stay at the injury site only for a short period of time, but the long-term therapeutic outcomes are from secondary influences. So I want to thank Arnold Kapler for giving me this uh, easy um, slide to understand this is a monocyte and the monocyte eat the mesenchymal stem cells activated and we have a mesenchymal stem cells instructed monocyte and at this point this mesenchymal stem cell instructed monocyte can include T cells and give to the T cells the capability to become a regulatory T cells and probably these are the cells that act into uh, our body with regenerative capacity. However, let's go back to my idea in 2005. When I saw the results in horses, I decided why not to use BMAC, but with the HA scaffold. And I presented, I started using, I presented the first results at the tissue engineering symposium at the Winston Salem, North Carolina, and the Wake Forest University on March 31st, 2005. Basically, I started using this uh, BMAC and uh, understanding how we could create uh, a clot and include this clot into our scaffold and apply our scaffold into our lesion. Why? Because we know that bone marrow is very easy to harvest and has high proliferation capacity. With the patient side centrifugation technique, it was possible to have this bone marrow in the same operating room at the same time of surgery with a significant advantage in time and cost saving. But what is inside BMAC? There are many studies showing the composition of BMAC, white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, hemoptopoietic and endothelial progenitor. So the question is, do we have enough mesenchymal stem cells into BMAC? And this was one of my concerns when I started doing this surgery. So we started trying to calculate how many cells we could have into bone marrow, but basically we understood that the number of these cells, especially these mesenchymal stem cells, were very, very small numbers. But there are some of these cells, because if we harvest BMAC and we put in culture, we can see that we have some colonies. And these colonies, at 72 hours, they become more and more and they start blending together and recreating tissue. So the question was, should we culture these cells in order to have more cells? But again, we will move to a lab, to cell cultivation, to surgery. And so we go back to a very high cost procedure. Furthermore, I was able to demonstrate that the number of colony forming units were not correlated to the clinical results. So in 2011, I started checking the patient, the kind of lesion and number of colony forming units, and we found there was no correlation. So 
Not that patients with more mesenchymal stem cell had better results. There was no correlation. At that time, it was quite difficult for me to understand. Now, with Arnold Kaplan new theories, it's probably easy. So at that time, I found it was important to demonstrate that we could achieve good clinical results with the condor side, so cell cultivation, or with BMAC. So I decided to do this study. I wanted to compare the Macy technique using the same scaffold with chondrocyte, seeded with chondrocyte, with a, a similar technique, but without chondrocyte, just using BMAC. So we use the same high-F scaffold, you have a base scaffold, and the two different techniques, one two-step technique with biopsy, cultivation of chondrocyte, implantation of chondrocyte into the scaffold, or one-step technique, the one that I developed using BMAC and putting during the same surgery BMAC on the scaffold. We analyzed a group of patients with difficult lesion to be treated, patellofemoral lesion for three years, and basically we found that uh, with statistics there was no difference. So we had an improvement in both techniques, but there was no significant difference between these patients, treated with the chondrocyte or without. And also MRI showed similar results. And this is uh, the two-step technique with Macy in a large patellar lesion. This is another large patellar lesion treated in one-step technique. And this is a trochlear lesion after Macy at 29 months. And this is a large patellar lesion treated with BMAC. This is a biopsy done after Macy, good result. And this is a biopsy 24 months after BMAC. Again, good results. So BMAC and Hyalophast can offer significant advantages because we have only one surgery. We don't have cell cultivation. It's easy to use. We reduce the surgical time. We reduce dramatically the cost and we can have similar results. So basically, after our experience, several articles appeared in literature. This is 2014 article showing that uh, uncultured marrow mononuclear stem cells and culture expanded mesenchymal cells uh, can ha have same results. So no significant difference in chondrogenesis. This is another study from James Huy showing that the chondrogenic potential in bone marrow, zinchymal stem cells are bigger than in adipose tissue and uh, peripheral blood derived bone nuclear cells showed inferior results when compared to the bone marrow derived uh, mononuclear stem cells. We also wanted to analyze the cost. And uh, if we consider in the United States, the technique so-called Macy, so cell cultivation, biopsy, and uh, preparation of the scaffold with the cells can range for, from $53,000 to $94,000. But the same procedure using VMAC and uh, Yellow on a scaffold can cost 10 times less. We also wanted to analyze the cost effective analysis, considering a period of five years, including the rehabilitation, the um, admission to the hospital twice. And uh, we found that again, there is a huge amount of money that we can save using one step technique. So the concept of, of a biological arthroplastic with a HAB mac is the possibility to treat large chondral defect in one step surgery with BMAC as scaffold implantation. And uh, these are just uh, some of the studies that uh, we published with uh, this technique. And uh, this is the possibility to treat a large condom defect. And this is a study that we published in 2014 um, in uh, one-step surgery 
in a very large lesion and uh, we found that it was possible to recreate a big part of the knee like large trochlear lesion, patellar lesion and femoral condyle. So multiple lesion, very difficult usually to be treated like in these cases and also kissing lesion. And uh, these are some of the statistics that we did. And we found that uh, we had a significant improvement of uh, Tegner and VAS uh, in this patient also with very large technique. Briefly, we harvest 60 milliliter of bone marrow from the iliac crest and uh, we centrifuge and we activate the clot using an enzyme that is a batoxobin in uh, and the composition the drug is a plateltex that is something that is commonly utilized in uh, cardiac surgery we prepare the defect very careful and we implant uh, the uh, scaffold with uh, the bone marrow the surgery starts with atroscopy and preparation of the lesion that should be done very carefully this is the scaffold this is the BMAC. We add BMAC to the scaffold. We can use in one single layer or two layers. We wait a few seconds, and when it is, the clot is very stable, we implant it to the lesion and we put some fibrin glue at the edges. But this is a very sticky clot, easy to be pasted and to be used. I want to show you this is a scaffold with the BMAC. Look, I can flip it over. And uh, it's like glue, so it's very, very easy to implant and you can treat many lesions in, in the knee. This is just one of our example. A 54 years lady, boxing instructor, very, 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 very active, very unhappy because of a chronic patellofemoral instability and uh, a huge lesion in the patella. So she was suggested to do a patellar implant to have a, a prosthesis. This is uh, the preoperative MRI showing four degree, but it's more interesting to have a look to the atroscopic images showing really a very large lesion. She also had a medial femoral condyle lesion. So we prepare the lesion and uh, we used the Maquet procedure in order to elevate the tibial tubercle and reduce the pressure. And the, the lesion was very large because this is 10 square centimeter lesion after preparation, as you can see in this slide. And uh, we treated the, 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 with the technique that I showed. This is a post-operative MRI. And this is the patient at one year, very happy and uh, feeling uh, back and she started running at uh, nine months we usually suggest the patient to um, wait uh, one year this is a second look of the lesion showing really a good uh, cartilage tissue we were able to do a second look because we had to remove the hardware uh, from the tibia and uh, this is uh, one recent study that we did with a long-term follow-up 10 years follow-up i think this is the longest follow-up with this technique and uh, showing that uh, we can treat a very large lesion. And this is the demographic of the patient. We did a lot of statistics. We found that successful outcomes can be found also in patient uh, not very young with a large lesion and multiple lesion. We compare the results at two years with the results at 10 years, and there is uh, a small decrease in the results that is obvious but still very good results at 10 years and if you check the Tecner score and the Coos score you can see that the results are really stable from three years five years and ten years this is the second look at two years in a very large lesion one of these lesions that I showed you was a patient with multiple lesions femoral and tibial lesion and uh, the healing is a very good healing so we concluded that ha bima can provide good uh, to excellent clinical outcomes and long term and uh, we can also treat large lesion 
and we can probably move in, in the future to really a biological solution. The age. Uh, at the beginning, I was suggesting uh, to treat patients under 45, 50 years of age. I was younger. I'm still active. This is my son. I'm 63. I still like to go with my bike. So who is old? But it's difficult to be able to suggest what kind of patient should be treated. So I wanted to check the results and uh, I published this study in uh, 20 patients treated with similar lesion, very similar lesion, under, 20, under 45 years of age and older patient above um, 45 years of age till uh, 58 years of age. We followed this uh, patient for three years and uh, we wanted to check carefully all the data and uh, basically we found that uh, there was no significant difference but for some um, scoring system like uh, objective and uh, and uh, satisfaction of the patient some of these uh, older patients were more satisfied probably because they have lower expectation than younger patients so we concluded saying that uh, we can also treat uh, older patients and we can have uh, good clinical results also in older patients. So based on this study, age does not seem to be a limiting factor for this kind of technique. So what I learned after more than 10 years, now it is 15 years of HA Beamer. Because I'm Italian, I love pasta. So I think that P is a patient selection. Very, very important. A, associated lesion. S, surgical technique. T, treat the organ. Don't, don't treat the lesion. You must really consider the full organ and use arthroscopy when it is possible. Regarding patient selection, I want to suggest all the audience to avoid this kind of technique in obese patient and in smokers because this can really be a great contraindication for this treatment. When we discuss about associated lesion, I used to consider, for instance, malalignment that is an absolutely hostile environment. We must unload the defect or the compartment, use osteotomy before or at the same time, but don't do this technique without correcting the alignment. Sometimes it's very complex. This is a 35 years female with maltracking, increased tibial rotation, varus knee, and patellofemoral cartilage defect. So we did a triple osteotomy. We corrected the varus, we corrected the rotation, and we corrected the uh, position of the patella. And we associated at the same time HA Bima. So this is again important the preparation of the defect if you don't remove the damaged cartilage tissue up to the healthy part of the bone if you do not create perpendicular walls and you remove the calcified cartilage it's difficult to achieve good results so you must spend a lot of time in the preparation of the lesion I suggest to use this instrument developed together with my friend uh, Boguslav Sadlik, and we studied with uh, Dr. White as well. This is the presentation and publication. And with this instrument, also under arthroscopic control, is possible to create good perpendicular walls. And again, this is very important. This is the histology. You can see that if you prepare with the chondrectomes, you can really have a good shape lesion. And finally, where are we putting our BMAC and scaffold? On the bone. So we need healthy soil for healthy cartilage. So always consider the subchondral bone because we should think what lies beneath. If we don't treat 
the subchondral bone and we simply put HAB mark on a damaged bone, we cannot achieve good results. So I use this technique that I developed uh, and together with the Scott Shi, and uh, we aspirate a small amount of uh, bone marrow in different position in order to have a better concentration of cells. And then we extract some bone doubles from the bone, as you can see, using the same instrument. And uh, we want to have a small pieces of bone that we will mix with the BMAC and we will fill the subchondral bone cyst or defect. Look, these are small doubles. When then we use a fluoroscopy, we identify the lesion and we upload these small doubles into our delivering system. Under arthroscopic control, we enter into the damaged subchondral bone. And you can see how we can push inside the lesion. Then we fill the defect with the bone marrow and we leave it clotting inside the subchondral cyst. Then we can move to superficial cartilage implantation. Some uh, example of what we call osteochoroplastic that we can also use in uh, different uh, pathology of the subchondral bone. Here you can see a bone marrow lesion, large, with a femoral condyle, hyper intense signal in T2, and uh, this was treated with osteochoroplastic technique. This is the fluoroscopy, and uh, this is uh, the pre op two months and uh, 12 months. So, very good healing of the subchondral bone. This is a patient at one year, went back to all his uh, activities. So we can treat spontaneous insufficiency fracture that uh, can be frequent also in sport um, player, like this is a rugby trainer, 54 years of age, and uh, this is uh, still running, doing a lot of sport, and uh, big pain, bone marrow edema, and this is a so-called SIFK, because this is a spontaneous insufficiency fracture. Same technique, osteochoroplasty, and we also treated the cartilage defect, and this is pre-op, two months and six months, completely healed. And this is another case of a lady, she was advised to do total knee replacement, you can see the subchondral cyst. This is the, the treatment with osteocarplasty, pre-op and at three months. Very fast healing in this case. As I said, I want to treat the knee like an organ. So I don't focus only on the cartilage lesion, the ligament, the meniscus, or the subchondral bone. I want to consider all together I try to use arthroscopy whenever it is possible because it makes things easier and faster. I want to share with you very fast some of our cases. This is a 39 years male, ex, uh, ex uh, basketball uh, um, top level player, and uh, he used to do a lot of uh, free weights at gym. He had a severe injury in 1994, he had a complete ACL tear and meniscal tear. He had a ACL reconstruction, he re-ruptured the ACL and he developed a arthritis, early arthritis. He was suggested to do total knee replacement at 39 years of age. He came to our observation and this is the picture of his knee. Huge stroke defect, femoral condyle defect, patellar defect. So we used 
in this uh, patient three scaffold with BMAC, and uh, we also did a revision of ACL. Um, as you can see here, Fulkerson procedure and cardio transplantation. This is a patient after four months of the surgery. This is the patient when we call him at four years follow up, lifting 400 kilograms with the two legs in the gym. This is a, a bilateral op, uh, cartilage lesion that we treated with opening wedge osteotomy and HABMAC. Again, this patient was suggested to do total knee replacement. We did a osteotomy. We follow up this patient for more than 10 years when we treated this patient was more than 60 years of age and uh, this is a patient at 10 years follow-up 70 years of age no total knee replacement in both knees he went back to a very active activity he is a big guy more than 120 kilograms of weight very happy i don't know if he will do probably a knee replacement in the future maybe yes but for sure, we were able to save 10 years of life and have a patient happy for 10 years. This is another case with multiple patellar lesion in a female. This is what we call two eye patellar lesion. We did a double uh, implant in the patella. And this is the MRI after one year. And I had the opportunity to see this patient after seven years because she had a meniscal injury. And when I put the scope inside the joint, I thought it was the normal knee, not the knee that I operated. But uh, this is the knee that I did cartilage transplantation. And you can see the cartilage after six years looks absolutely normal. And this was 57 years of age patient. And this is the lady. This is a very high level pro ice hockey player originally from Russia, but he moved to the United States. He was playing in one of the top um, team in the United States. He had a great four trocha and medial femoral condyle lesion, very large lesion. It was in the season. We decided to do BMAC and scaffold. He came to Italy, we did the surgery, and uh, he went back to sport. This is the MRI after one year. He was able to play five years with a very good results. So for us was one of our best results. After five years, this is the score. He had an injury to the opposite knee. But at that time, the team suggested him simply to do chondroplastic and microfracture because he was at the end of his career. He could not stop for a long period of time. So he accepted and he did microfracture. After rehabilitation program, after one year, he continued to have a very, very important pain. So he came to Italy, and this is a picture of the arthroscopy. A large chondral defect, absolutely not healed. And this is the lesion, and there is absolutely no healing. So we treated like the opposite knee, again with BMAC and transplantation. Here you can see the membrane you can see the implantation. And this is 10 years follow up. The patient is completely satisfied, two knees with HABMAC, and this is the 10 years follow up. He's not uh, playing okay because of his age, but he's running in the desert, he's uh, fishing in the ocean and playing at high level golf. At this point, I think that maybe you are curious and you want to know more. So if you want to know more about this technique, I suggest you to uh, read this book, Bioorthopedics, that I prepared together with my friend Joao Estroguer Mendez, John Lane and Mustafa. And uh, I really thank you very much for your kind attention.